So we've come to the end. I've just got a couple of little things to do just to identify the operating system. First thing is to put the release number of the LFS in this file that can be useful. Another thing are these LSB release and OS release files, which we need to modify just to customize them. So VI LSB release and just put your name or some sort of identifier there so I just normally put kernel text in here and same with the OS release just put some sort of identifier there get counted if you want to get yourself a LFS user number and then finally rebooting the system let's log out of the truth and unmount all the file systems not forgetting that we need to unmount the boot which has worked and finally unmount the LFS system itself Okay, so there's still something mounted. Oh, yes, it's SHM. That's the one I should have unmounted previously. So, still something there. Okay, looks like the LFS dev hasn't come off, probably because of that. Yeah, because of that, that's why. That's it. So should all be unmounted now. Yep, there's nothing there. And now we can reboot the system. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do anything with the disks and I'm going to reboot the system and attempt to boot as it is uh, with the disk as SDB. And it should boot because I've specified all the partitions with using the UUID. Then what I'm going to do is to power down the machine, remove the Debian disk and replace it, put the um, LFS disk in its position. So it's the only disk in the machine and then reboot and, and I'm expecting that it should still reboot. Well, that's the idea. Let's see how we go. So I'll log out of the route from that and I'm going to restart the machine and keep my fingers crossed uh, close the window so I'll have to resynchronize the screen here as it boots because it tends to uh, lose track of what's happening I need to press F12 on this machine to get a menu up to allow me to select what I want to boot from So, in theory, all I need to do is press enter and hopefully that will boot, which it appears to be doing. Yep, that's good. We've got grub up, so that's a good start. So, let's wait for the timeout to occur. And unfortunately, oh yes, I've made one mistake. I've forgotten to remove the boot because uh, the kernel is in its own partition. It doesn't need to have the boot subdirectory specified because the VM Linux is in the root of that partition of the boot partition so I need to modify that so I'll take that boot out and then do control X to boot and with any luck yes it is booting let me try and do another sync of the screen okay Yep, there it is. Okay, so if I log in with the root password that I set before, I'm going to mount the boot and edit the boot grub, grub.config. 
and remove that forward slash boot because it's not needed. That's how it would be if you didn't have a separate boot partition. You'd leave that boot in there. So I'll just leave it like that. Save it. And what I'm going to do now is to reboot and retry. Make sure it does work. I'll just get this to sync. I'm not going to get the menu up. I'm just going to let it boot because I've told it which disk to boot from. Yep, that's fine. And yes, it's booted automatically that time. So that's good. Just try and get this to resync again. Yep, that's it. It's so quick booting it. It can come up with a prompt before the sync locks on. So once again, I'm going to log in as root ls cpu so there's the cpu i've been running on um looks like there's uh vulnerabilities with the uh cpu purely because there's no updated well the, the chip's so old there's no new mo microcode anyway so even if i did fix that with some microcode it would be out of date anyway looks like there's maybe some more settings possibly to uh, fix those vulnerabilities but I can do a cat of etc lfs release to show we've got 12.4 um, the host name is lfs 12.4 or dash 4 um, let's look at the lsb release file so there's the settings there and the same for the os release again that's all correct i'll just quickly ping my name server yep that's getting there so that shows the network's running let's try pinging it using its name that's working so that shows the internal name resolutions working finally let's try pinging uh, linux from scratch if they allow it I can't remember if they do or not and yes they do so that shows that the uh, looks like it's only laying one let's try Google yep that's working so that shows that the name server is working going outside as well so I think that's uh, more or less all I can show um, apart from viewing a few versions of the software but uh, apart from that that was a successful build okay so what I've done is I've disconnected the Debian disk and put the um, LFS disk in its place so the machine has only got the one disk in it now so I'm just going to boot the machine and just check that it still boots even though all the device identifiers would have changed. So SDB would have become now SDA. And you can see it's booting successfully. Yep, that's logged in. Oh, sorry, booted correctly, no errors. Log in and LSCPU again, there we are. LFS release. LSB release and so on. So that shows that the uh, UUID settings are working as expected. So that's the end of the video. So I hope you found it interesting and useful. Um, and I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you have. And if you would like to hear about other things that I do, other videos, um, subscribe to my channel just click on my icon in the bottom right hand corner and uh, even leave leave me a note to say that you enjoyed it thanks very much for watching goodbye